dear viewers in this video we will see how we will estimate the right sample size or proportion or if you want to calculate the population proportion based on a sample proportion what will be the right sample size let's understand about this before we go any further what do we mean by proportion proportion is an outcome of a discrete binary data what do we mean by discrete binary data let us say i work in a bulk manufacturing company so every bulk that i inspect i pick up a bulk that got manufactured i put it in a testing bench i turn on the power supply and see whether the bulb is glowing if it glows then i call it a good bulb if it does not glow then i call it a defective bulb so in this case what happens a bulb can either be called as a good one or it can be called as a defective one so a single test can either give you a result of good one or a defective one so a data can only be represented in two forms is what we call it as discrete binary data so when you have a discrete binary data you started doing inspection on that the result can be represented in a proportion so what do we mean by proportion historically if i test 100 items and i found 90 to be good and 10 to be defective then i would say 90 percentage is the accuracy of this process right so 90 percentage the proportion of good items produced by this process is 90 percent this is what we mean by a proportion which is an outcome of discrete binary data now we will see how to calculate the right sample size to estimate the population proportion based on a sample proportion. so in our example we are going to consider the historical accuracy percentage of this particular process is 90 percent the next information that we would like to know is what is the confidence interval that means when i am going to estimate my population parameter based on sample statistics let us assume my sample statistics turned out to be 82 percentage now 82 percentage plus or minus how much error i am comfortable with let us say i am comfortable with plus or minus 2 percentage of error then this 2 percentage plus or minus 2 percentage means my population parameter can fall anywhere from 80 percentage to 84 percentage so this is what we mean by our confidence interval and for us to estimate this within this interval how confident you are that is called the confident level and in many of our previous videos we have covered that generally in any statistical applications or any statistical analysis we will go for 95 percentage of confidence level so confidence interval will be the second information how much error that we are comfortable with in our example let's take two percentage is the error that we are comfortable with and the confidence level that we are okay will be 90 percentage of confidence level. these are the input information that you need to estimate the sample size for estimating population proportion from sample proportion now we'll click on stack we'll go for power and sample size estimation stacks so sample size for estimation so once you click on sample size for estimation then you can use this drop down to decide what is the descriptive statistics for which you want to do this estimation so in our case we are going to estimate the sample size Uh, or we are going to identify the correct sample size to estimate population proportion from sample proportion so hence i am selecting proportion right so what is my historical proportion of accuracy or historical proportion of good bulbs produced by this process so the known historical proportion is 90% but i will not be able to enter it 90% as it is i am going to say 0.90 right and i am going to estimate my sample size so for me to estimate my sample size i need to know what is the margin of error that i am comfortable with in our example i am comfortable with 0.02 or in other words i am comfortable with plus or minus 2 percentage of error that is the information i enter here and once i click on options i can decide what will be my confidence level so i am going to keep my confidence level as 95 percentage i am going to keep my confidence level as 95 percentage and i am going to keep this estimation a two sided one that means plus or minus i can have error on both sides now i click on okay then i click on okay so 
as per Minitab, what we understood is, if your historical error percentage is 90% and with sided interval of plus or minus 0.2% with a confidence level of 95%, you need to pick up 1,027 samples. So friends, if you look at this very closely, now I just go back to the previous thing. So instead of 90%, if I make it 80, I don't change anything else. Only thing is in my population, the proportion of good items is 80 and bad items is 20. Earlier it was 90, 10. Now it is 80, 20. If the population proportion goes down from 90, see what happens to the sample size. The sample size increases, right? I further reduce this down. Instead of 80, let me keep it at 60, right? So if you see what will happen, you will find that the sample size further increases. Now let me put 50, right? When I put 50, that means what? When I produce 100 items, there is an equal proportion of items which can be good. There is equal proportion of items which can be bad. So that's what a 50 percentage proportion means. Then what happens? Then your sample size is the highest, 2,449. If you compare, this is the highest sample size that we got. So as our population proportion reduces from 90, 80, 60, 50, your sample size increases. Now what we will do is we will further reduce it to 40. So that means what? Out of 100 items I produce, 40 will be good and 60 will be bad. That is the meaning. I did not change any of the other parameters. I just keep it at 40 and then I hit OK. Now if you see again, my sample size will reduce. And if I still make this 40 as 20, my sample size will reduce. The reason is, when your population have a clear verdict that majority of the items I produce will be good and very small number of items will be bad, then to estimate my population parameter, I need less number of samples. Whereas in my population, good items and bad items have almost equal amount of proportion. Then to estimate my population parameter, I need more samples. So the decision here is how many samples you need to pick up is decided based on what is the proportion of your population. And as usual, like any other um, you know, population parameter, error plays a role. If I don't want 0 0.2, but if I want 0 0.1, right? Then what happens? I wanted to estimate my population parameter with much less error in a very narrow you know, interval. So then what, what will happen is I, I, I will have to pick up more samples. Similarly, if I keep it at 0 0.2 only, but if I want to increase my confidence level, what will happen? Instead of 95, let me keep it at 99, what will happen? Then also, I may be, uh, I have to collect more samples. So depending upon the interval and your confidence level, your sample size increases, but over on top of it, what is the proportion of your population? That plays a very important role in deciding what will be your sample size. So if you have a question, I don't know what is my population uh, proportion. I don't have information about it, right? There is no historical uh, accuracy data. So this is the first time I'm doing it. Then as a statistician, what we would suggest is please go with 50 percentage possibility of good items and bad items. That is the uh, best assumption or fair assumption to take if you are unaware of the population so friends, let me repeat one more time. If you want to estimate your population parameter, that is population proportion based on sample proportion, you can click on stats, you can click on power sample size, and you can click on sample size for estimation. And here you can keep proportion. So this column, you need to enter your historical population proportion. If you don't know that number, the best or fair assumption is to keep it at 0.5. That is 50 percentage of good items and 50 percentage of bad items. This column, you need to enter what would be your error, that acceptable amount of error. And in this column, you will enter your confidence level. And here you will keep your confidence interval as two-sided. So this is how you will estimate your sample size. The other thing that could happen is you may not decide what is the right sample size based on error. Instead, your sample size will be predefined and you wanted to calculate error. So in this case, what, is, what we are going to do is, my historical population proportion is 90%, and I decided to pick up 
630 samples. Why 630 samples? I have only one resource and that resource for a given day can only monitor or can only do inspection for 630 bulbs. So what I now need to estimate is, I'm not going to estimate my sample size. Instead, I'm going to estimate what will be the error if my sample size is 630. So again, I go to options. I keep my confidence level as 95, right? And then I say, okay, okay. So now what I understand is, if I take a sample size of 630, then the margin of error would be plus 0.22 minus 0 0.26. So whatever is your proportion, for that proportion, plus or minus, how much will be your margin is given here. So you can either decide your sample size based on historical proportion, margin of error, and confidence level. Or if you decided to go ahead with a fixed number of sample, for that sample, what will be the margin of error? Both can be calculated. Friends, I hope this video was helpful. So we are planning to come up with another video on how to calculate sample size if you want to estimate mean of a continuous data. So please subscribe to our channel uh, so that you can get to see all the videos that we post related to statistical concepts and how these concepts will help in your quality management exercises. Thanks, friends. Thanks for your time.